I'm Darren Pickering and I'm from WorldPay's technology innovation team. I'm technology um, architect, innovation architect within the team. And I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about uh, e-commerce and the future of e-commerce as we see it. So it's only a 20 minute slot, so it's quite a lot we could cover within 20 minutes. But we're just going to cover a few highlights of that. So first of all, a little bit about WorldPay. So um, I expect most of you probably heard of WorldPay. Uh, basically, we cover two things. We cover the world and we cover pay, payments. So we, are, we have um, several hundred different types of payments that you can take through WorldPay. We cover dozens of countries and we are a global company. If you want to hear a little bit more about what we do commercially, uh, we're just over there at, um, at the, I, the IRX bar. We're in the corner, so if you want to talk to some of our team about some more of our coverage, we can do that there. So I won't go into details at this point. So for today, I'm going to cover three basic themes. One of those is about the seamless experience um, that e-commerce will require as people go on. The next one is the advances in technology that we are experiencing at the moment and that will continue as we move through into the future. And the final one is a little bit about some of the security and some of the things that are going to be coming into e-commerce as well as face-to-face -face transactions. So we'll start with some trends. So these are things that are happening at the moment and are going to influence e-commerce as we move forward. The first thing is the movement towards mobile. And we've already reached a stage where mobile has completely outnumbered the regular web browser transactions. So the numbers you're seeing on the screen at the moment are taken from um, some Alipay statistics, which is, uh, for those who aren't familiar with Alipay, it's basically the biggest e-commerce platform in China. And just on one day through Alipay, uh, 9.4 billion pounds worth of transactions were processed around 710 million transactions on just for one day. So it gives you a sort of example of that scale. And from those statistics, we found that 71% of them came from a mobile phone. So straight away, you can see how easily mobile outnumbers websites. Looking at um, e-commerce generally, one of the big trends that we are also seeing is that more and more people are deciding now that they want to collect goods in store. So straight away, that's bringing up a, uh, a need for a merge between what people see as a straight pure play e-commerce site and what people are having for a bricks and mortar. And this doesn't necessarily mean that people need to set up their own shops, but what tends to happen is there's lots of partnerships going on and people are allowing people to buy goods on, in one store and then collect them from some other premises. So one ex particular example is Argos is doing quite a lot with this, working with people like eBay for collecting goods in there. And um, it's also saying that there's 43% um, of consumers are now wanting to use this click and collect service in one form or an another. So it's something that's definitely worth everybody investigating as they move forward if they aren't doing so already. And 20% of consumers are doing some form of click and collect from a, um, a, a store um, at least four times a month. So that's quite heavily used. And we do see that this is going to increase as well as time goes on. All these figures, by the way, are coming from our World Pay Global Payments Report. And so if anybody wants a copy of that, we're giving those away on the, the, the stand just around the corner. Just go up and collect one, and it gives you all these sort of numbers. So if any, you don't need to note them all down, it's all printed out for you. Another project we are working on is to do with the standardization of payments. So some people within our team are, are on the board um, for the WC3, the, web, the World Wide Web Consortium, for doing um, the standardization of browser-based payments. So this is from the browser itself, it can call a payment wallet and allow you to pay straight from the browser. This is something that's not quite out yet, but the large browser companies are already working on this, and it's something we're quite heavily involved with. But we do see this is quite important for e-commerce because it does mean a far easier and slicker user experience that people just go onto the web browser. When it comes to pay, they go straight into something they're familiar with in terms of a mobile wallet. Um, one other very interesting statistic is about the richness of content that's on websites. Uh, from some of the data that we've had through our traffic going through our analytics platform, we can say straight away that the websites that put video for a product are getting a two and a half times the conversion rate of those that don't. So again, by something that's a fairly straightforward change to a website, 
uh, you can make a big difference. And again, we're seeing this as increasing. And one thing that's really nice about this is that at one point, if you wanted to make a video production, you'd get in a big film crew. Nowadays, you get very good quality from just mobile phone footage. So it's quite an easy step for people to do to make their own videos. The next stage of that is that people are going to go one stage further and virtual reality and augmented reality are going to be coming into e-commerce fields. And we'll see this in is increasing quite rapidly. You've probably seen around the show the last couple of days there are quite a few virtual reality headsets already popping up and we'll see this increase. For those who don't quite know the difference between virtual reality and augmented reality, virtual reality is a fully a graphic environment where you put the headset on and you see everything computer generated, whereas augmented reality you'll see in the real world and you're seeing something imposed on the top. So one example on here on the screen is a furniture site where um, you walk around into a physical store, you can see the furniture, but you're able to change aspects of that furniture. In this case, they're changing the color of this little chest of drawers to see what the alternatives look like that they may be in stock. And there's lots of um, companies experimenting with this at the moment. One very exciting one is um, one organization that's dealing with um, augmented reality mirrors for fashion retailers. So you walk into the changing rooms wearing one set of clothing that you've picked off the rack, but while you're in the changing room, you're able to interact with the mirror directly and change the color of the clothing or some styles of the clothing directly and see what that would look like without having to go back into the store and try and find that other um, alternative. So these are very exciting, and for e-commerce, it does mean with the virtual reality side, definitely this is something that can be on a website and you can go through that full shopping experience uh, from your home. Um, another trend is the, change of the types of devices that people will be able to have um, or people are able to interact with when they're doing their shopping. So we've got quite an array around um, that diagram on the screen. Uh, with the usual web browsers, there's television sets that you can do your um, e-commerce through. We've mentioned the virtual reality or augmented reality headsets. They're exciting um, from that. But also um, you're able to do lots more features through things like cameras and also some other devices as well, which I'll come on to in a second in terms of connections. As a matter of interest, how many people here is already using a smartwatch? Have we got any smartwatch users in the room? A few? A small handful? Uh, we're expecting this is still going to go up quite a lot. At the moment, they're, quite, they're still quite expensive and quite gimmicky, but the technology on these watches are increasing dramatically. And we'll see that there's going to be a lot more convergence in terms of making these um, payments in a store, but also these, you're going to be able to do a lot more interactions with websites as well through some of these watches. And the, as the technology improves, more people will start using those. One of the biggest and most dramatic changes um, over the last couple of years and moving forward is the Internet of Things. It's a term that's mentioned quite a lot, but basically it is the idea of connecting a device to the Internet, which may not necessarily be a web browser, but it could be anything at all, like a fridge or a television or a washing machine or a car. It's the idea that all these gadgets, devices, gizmos can be connected to the internet and they will be able to be consumers in their own right. One exciting statistic on here is that they're reckoning that by the year 2020 there will be 25 billion devices connected to the internet. And some people even say this is an um, underestimate and I've even heard figures as high as 40 billion devices. So the interesting thing here as far as e-commerce is concerned that these devices can actually be consumers. So suddenly your market is going to increase dramatically in terms of devices wanting to buy from your stores as well. A couple of examples on the screen of very, very simple um, user interfaces for e-commerce, um, Internet of Things. We've got the um, Amazon dashboard button, which this is a, a very, very simple gadget, just there. So the idea here is that this simple button you can attach to it something and in this case, it's a washing machine. When you start running out of washing powder, you press the button and it will automatically order your favorite washing powder direct from Amazon in this case, and it will be delivered to your house. So you don't have to go onto a website at all. It goes for an e-commerce transaction. You just press a button and it gets delivered. You can't get a simpler user interface than this, just one button, something a child could use. Very, very simple. I have two small children. So if anybody wants to buy 226 boxes of washing powder, come and see me later. Another exciting um, 
thing, thing on the system, um, on the screen. This one is um, an Internet of Things uh, trainers or uh, running shoes. And these are connected to Pizza Hut. It's a proof of concept, but they have got these live. And this example, you wear the, your shoes. And if you want pizza, wherever you are, in the UK anyway, you press a button on the shoe and your pizza will get delivered to you where you are. So it's fitted with GPS and it works out where your nearest Pizza Hut is and they will bring you pizza. And it's then connected with your favorite pizza you set up on their website. It goes through the card on file payments and you get your pizza. So they're slightly gimmicky, but they're an interesting thing of where we could go in in the future. But it's examples of very, very simple Internet of Things gadgets and devices. Um, another one on here, which um, has been in the press quite a lot, is the idea of um, ordering milk from a fridge. So um, in this case, uh, it could be lots of other things in the fridge as well, but you, you set your fridge up, you know what, exactly what it's going to be stocked with. When people take something out of the fridge, the fridge restocks itself. It adds things to your shopping basket, as you can see on the right side of the screen. Um, and the, so the idea is that whenever you start running out of things, the fridge knows when to restock, when to reorder, and it's all associated with your favorite brands and alternatives in some cases as well. So again, this is an idea that the fridge becomes a consumer. The fridge has um, a delegated responsibility to make payments on your behalf. So again, something quite interesting for the future, something to be aware of that your customers aren't people, they are gadgets. In terms of delivery, we mentioned um, uh, one click and collect in store. This is um, an alternative to that. Um, if anybody is around, if anybody goes around London much, you may have already seen these. This is called the Starship Delivery Bot, and the idea is here. I think they're delivering food to start off with, but they're they are expecting it to deliver other things as well. It's basically a small robot that will go to you where you are, and um, when you get when you get it, you can unlock the, the top and take whatever you're having delivered straight to, your, to wherever you are. And the other one on there is that it doesn't just have to be a roaming robot. There's a few companies now with the idea of um, little uh, quadcopter drones that will drop your packages down to where you are as well. So you don't have to go to a store. You don't, have, you don't even have to be at your home. These are ideas that wherever you are, they, they, using your mobile phone or some other GPS type technology, they can deliver products directly to you from your e-commerce store based on customer preferences. So again, quite interesting things that are starting to appear in the market now. And um, our team are starting to look at some of these. They haven't let us buy any drones yet, but we're still trying to come up with a use case. Um, going a little bit further into the future, everybody's uh, seen in the media, I expect, all about the driverless cars, which are pretty imminent. Um, if you have a driverless car, one thing you have to consider is what happens when you're not in the car and the car needs to do something. For instance, the car needs to park, the car needs to get fuel, the car needs to recharge if an electric car, or the car needs some other services. What we're expecting is that the driverless car is going to be a very big consumer as we move forward. And so the example on the left side of the screen is, the, is somebody sitting in their car, but in this case, this may not even be in their own car. It may be that this car is... A, uh, a fairly self-contained thing that you can go out and hire, but the car is going to need consumables and services, and that car is going to want to make those make some form of transaction. The one on the right, a little bit um, further into the future, is the idea of a robot assistant. This is a humanoid-style robot. Um, this one is um, manufacturing uh, something by hand, but this robot, again, could be um, needing to buy special parts, or it may need to buy services like its own maintenance routine and things, and the owner of this robot would be able to give this robot some sort of authority to make transactions and have either a prepaid account or some form of account that they're able to take funds from to, to buy things. These concepts aren't just technology, they're also they're going to be legal implications and they're also going to be regulations going alongside that as well. So our team at WorldPay are very much researching where these fit into society and what this could really mean as, as, a, as time moves on how much authority can a robot have, what the legal implications of a transaction made by a robot. Um, if a robot steals something, who's responsible? All these questions need to be asked, so it's quite exciting, and um, we're quite pleased to be working on some of these type of uh, projects. Um, if anybody wants to see something a little bit more real, um, even though it's made out of Lego, um, we have a demonstration over there, um, which is showing how machine-to-machine -machine payments can take 
place. So this was a car parking model. And the idea on here is that um, the cars will communicate directly with the parking meter and they'll be able to pay for their parking. So in, th in this situation, um, we have, we're assuming the driverless cars, the owner gets out of the car, they go off to work or they go off to do the shopping and say bye-bye to the car and the car drives off and finds somewhere to park, pays for the parking and then comes to collect you later. So this is a thing we're calling will pay within, something we are prototyping at the moment but is getting quite a lot of interest in the industry uh, as a payment negotiation and also a payment mechanism. And again, this is another example where a device becomes a consumer and all these transactions go across the internet as an internet of things transaction, therefore it's an e-commerce business and something to be aware of. So if you want to have a look at this and play around with it, move the cars around and see how you can make payments, just pop over to our stand over there at the other side of the um, IRX bar. Right, I'm going to go through a few um, little bits about uh, some statistics now to, to show some of these trends. Again, if you want to have more details on any of these or if you want um, one of our printed reports, just pop over to one of the stands that are all the way around the bar area and just take one of the leaflets, all free to give away. And so this particular one is all about the reasons why people uh, may drop out of a transaction. This is effectively abandoned baskets. And some of the things that we're going to be looking at in the future are ways that we can get rid of these problems or at least reduce them. So one of the um, quite big ones is that a third of the people decided that they wanted to drop out of a transaction because they had to create an, e an account with an organization before um, they went ahead to make the purchase. Something very straightforward to, to sort that one out is a change to a website, and that is you, you take all the information you need just for the transaction and then at the end of that, you just give a little checkbox, do you want to create an account? So that way they're already going through that transaction before they go ahead and buying. So it's an interesting number, but it, at the moment it doesn't need future technology, it just needs a slight tweak to existing technology. But where it's interesting for the future is there's a lot of technologies where you would have a wallet application that can give a lot of this information straight to uh, your store and you don't have to have customers re-entering all that every time they come to a new store. Going back to that W3C initiative again, where it will fill the information in. Um, and some other ones on here, um, we've got a lot more in the report, uh, but 25% of people dropped out purely because their favorite payment type wasn't available for the website. Again, it's a very straightforward thing to change, it's just another implementation. Um, and the th one that is significant, particularly for technology, is that 23 people. 23% of the people who responded to um, these surveys said they didn't trust the payment security of a lot of the websites why, and that's why they dropped out. This can be something very simple, like you don't see little padlocks on the website when you're, going, when you're filling in forms to indicate the website's secure, but also um, it's a trust and a branding thing. And by using some of the modern payment methods and the integrated payment wallets, you can get around that. But those numbers are quite significant to the fact that they're fairly straightforward things to change on e-commerce, but they will have a massive impact by changing them. Um, we, go, we go back to a little bit on those one-click things. We mentioned the buttons as physical things, but also the one-click on e-commerce. A large number of people think that uh, one-click is really good because it's a very nice user interface, it's very simple. But at the same time as that, there is a concern about the trust of the payment details as well and all your user information. So one thing to bear in mind is that you need to have, make sure that your details are safe and have, um, uh, and have a user experience that indicates um, there's nothing odd going on with their details. And again, that could be trust through um, using recognized brands as well. Um, one thing that is very interesting to us is the use of biometrics. So. Um, I'm going to ask you to interact again a little bit. How many people use the fingerprint sensor on their mobile phone or PC? Uh, it's quite a number. I'd say it's a majority, which is quite exciting. So everybody has already, everybody's probably familiar with biometrics, and it looks like a majority of people are already using a biometric in one form. So the fingerprint reader is very good because it means that um, in most cases you don't have to remember complicated passwords or PIN codes and it does make a greater, greater user experience and it's also something that's very difficult to forge or, or to replicate. Um, so it's good security with an ease of use. So biometrics will increase as we go on and there's lots more biometrics platforms coming in as well. 
So this slide here gives an example of some of the biometrics that are available today and are coming in. The uh, most exciting one on here, or the most um, interesting for a technology side, is probably the DNA. I'm not sure how they're doing that. There's been like, some people saying, lick my phone and things like that, but um, I'm not going to go there. But there's all sorts of things to do with um, face recognition, voice recognition, brain recognition, gait recognition, the way you walk. But biometrics, very exciting. This is going to be some, somewhere in e-commerce quite growing. I've just got one minute now, so I'll just go quickly through those. But another thing on here is these are the organizations that are looking at biometrics at the moment. So Attention, please. there's a Starting lot going on there. The and biometrics will become part of the e-commerce flow as well. So when you, you go to buy something, the biometric can be used as a secondary authentication to secure the payment. And then just go back to the future snapshots. What we're looking at as things go to the future is transactions are going to be instant or as seamless as possible. There's going to be a lot more connected devices on the internet, and there's a lot more emphasis on the security and um, assuring your customers that you're putting security in there in terms of the biometrics and other systems. Thank you very much. Um, come and see us on our stand, and if anybody wants to follow me on Twitter, that's my Twitter attack. Thank you very much.